I want to welcome everyone out to our Success Factors webinar. My name is Kareem Rashad, and today's topic is integrated solutions for steel structures, including connections, design, and drawings. In STAD Pro, we will be working from modeling through analysis and design, demonstrating the power and advantages of the physical modeling workflow. Next, we will focus on designing connections for our steel structure in RAM connection. And finally, after designing our connections, we will go into the steel auto drafter workflow where we will create our 2D drawings from our 3D STAD Pro model. Let's begin our session here with creating a new STAD model. First, we're going to name the model, choose the location of the file. This is going to be a physical model here that we're creating, and our units are going to be metric. Let's create the model now. So we're going to get started by first creating a grid, and we're going to use this grid to create our frame. We're going to put in 17 spaces, and then the vertical spacing will be 0.5 meters. Now, in terms of the width of our structure, the width of our structure is going to be 12 meters wide. And so, again, we're going to have 24 spaces and 0.5 meters per space on our grid. Let's create the grid now. Okay, now that we've rotated our grid to the correct position, we can go here to the view menu and let's turn on our ruler. And with our ruler, we are going to go up about four meters here, actually four and a half meters, and then we'll go all the way up to the top um, for the next another four and a half meters. We can also measure along the bottom here for 12 meters, and let's measure along the top to this point that's six meters. Okay, with our ruler in place, we can go back to our modeling view or modeling ribbon, and we're going to add our members in now. And now we've created part of our frame. For our next step, what we're going to do is we're going to segment some members. So we're going to select the member that we want to segment, go to our Members Tools ribbon, and we'll choose Segment Member. Let's actually split the member into a number of segments, actually. And we're going to create nodes only. We're not going to actually split the members. So we want to have a total of six seg segments along the bottom cord. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing for the top cord. We're going to also select those members, and we're going to segment the members in the same way and create nodes only. But this time, we're only creating three segments per member. Okay, now that we've done that, we can easily frame out the truss on the um, bottom cord and the top cord. So here I'm going to go back to my modeling ribbon. I'm going to grab my member button and just begin to model my framing in here. Okay, and we're done with that part. Now that we've added our framing in, let's go to our view menu and turn our rulers off. And we want to begin to add sections to uh, these members and we're going to add in some supports. Let's actually start out with the supports here. So I'll just grab the nodes at the base of the frame, and then I'll go to my nodes tools, and I'm going to create fixed supports there. Okay, you can see the fixed supports appear. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the members that I want to uh, add descriptions for, and I'll type in my first description. This will be column one. And then I will fill the selection. So now I have those columns identified. And let's select all of our bracing. And let's call that truss one. 
Okay, now we're ready to assign our sections and material properties. So what we're going to do here, we'll go to Members, and let's select the members we want to assign first. So I'll select my uh, bean, and go to Member, Section, and we're going to choose the section from the table. It's going to be a W section. And lastly, let's select all of our trust members. So we're going to select by description, and we're going to assign angles to those members. So we'll choose from the database an angle. It'll be a 6 by 6 by 5 8 inch angle. Okay, and we have our sections assigned for the frame. Now we can also assign our materials. So I'll click on material, choose the material I want. This is going to be for the angles A572 grade 50. Okay, I'll select the other members by description. So I'll hold down the control key, select the members I want, and then choose select by description. It selects the other members I need there. And now we can assign the materials to those members which is going to be A992 steel. Now let's review what we've assigned. So we're going to render this model. I'll select everything. I'll go to view and do a 3D render. So from this I noticed that I haven't assigned the material to the bottom cord, which I want to do. And I also want to rotate my columns uh, 90 degrees. So let's do that now. Okay, let's start by assigning the material to the bottom cord. So that gets assigned there. You see the difference. And now let's rotate the columns. I'll go to Member, Rotate 90 degrees. Okay. The next step for this frame is to, top, is to set the top of steel height for the beams at the top of the columns. So I'll select the beams here and the top cord the bottom cord and then once I have those members selected I'm going to choose cross section position and the cross section will position will be top center now that we've created our first frame we want to select that frame and use translational repeat so I'll go to model translational repeat and we're going to go in the X direction with the translational repeat and we're going to go one step at six meters. And we are going to link the steps with an open base. So I'll click OK. Now, if I go to my isometric view, you'll see how this got created. And these are the new members between the link steps. Let's repeat this process for the next uh, segment of the frame. OK, so we have our structure. And now we're going to continue modeling our floor framing and our vertical and horizontal bracing. So let's do that now. I'm going to use translational repeat once again here. We're this time going in the Z direction. It'll be the negative Z direction. And we want three copies. Three meters. And we'll say OK. Let's add some additional framing where we're going to have uh, openings in our slab. Let's add some additional vertical bracing. We're going to use our snap points. Let's add in our horizontal bracing now. Um, now we're going to add in an extended portion of the roof. And now let's finish out our framing for the extended roof portion. Okay, let's return to our full model view.
So for the next stage of our modeling, we're going to be creating our load cases and our load groups and also our load combinations. Our load cases are going to be our primary load cases that we're then going to combine uh, in combinations. So for example, dead load, live load, wind, and seismic loads will be our primary load cases. And then they'll be combined together in our combinations. We're also going to create load groups, which are loads that can be used in our load cases. So to do this, we're going to use the spreadsheet functionality and we're going to take a look at our load cases first. So let's go ahead and create our dead load case now. We're going to enter in a name and a description. And, and then we're going to choose the direction and uh, intensity of the self weight. So we'll put that as negative 1.0 in the Y direction. Okay, so that's going to be our dead load case. Now let's continue and create our other load cases as well. Okay, so we've created our primary load cases now, and we're also ready to create our load groups. Okay, let's go to our load groups page on the spreadsheet, and we can enter in the name, the description, and the type there. So for this load group, we're actually going to be including this load in our seismic loads. So this is going to be the mass of the structure in the x direction. So that will be the name and we'll also do create a load case for the z direction as well. The type will be a mass here. And then so we're going to put the intensity of this load in the X and Z direction. Okay, so now we've set up our load groups that we're going to add load into. So to model in our area loads, you can see it's right here on the ribbon, on the modeling ribbon. First, we're going to change to the load case that we want to add those area loads into. So we're going to choose mass of the structure in the x direction. Okay, and now we will actually um, choose the level where we want to add those areas in. So I'll select the framing at that level and I will do view selected objects to just see the framing at that floor level. Now let's begin to add in our area loads. I'll go back to model plus and for the area loads we're going to just create the areas there where we want the tributary area of our structure to be calculated and distributed to our members. So we're going to do this very easily and quickly. Now let's go back to our spreadsheet functionality and take a look at the area loads that we've created. So I'm going to go to spreadsheet and I'm going to choose area loads. Now we want to actually um, place a load value on each of the area loads. You can see we have 20 areas here that are selected that I just created and we're going to put in the magnitude of the slab that we have not modeled but we want to distribute to our members. So let's choose the magnitude and the direction. Now remember this is going to be the mass for the seismic load so this is going to be applied in the X direction. So we'll do that there and so we have the magnitude which is one kilonewton per meter squared and we have the direction in the X direction. The next step will be to distribute the load in both load cases. So we're going to choose the loaded edges. So that's going to be edge 1 and edge 3. Now we will want to select the areas where we're going to have a two-way load applied. So let's just select the specific areas holding down the control key. And in those areas we're going to distribute the load two-way to the beams. So now you can see the load being distributed around the whole 
perimeter of those areas. Okay, so on the spreadsheet, we're going to go to load cases here, and we'll see we have our seismic in the X and seismic in the Z. We'll notice that we can put the self-weight for the structure in the X direction as well as the Z direction. So we'll do that with a factor of 0.1 or 10% of the mass of the structure. We're also going to do that for the Z direction as well. And then we're going to also do that for the area loads that we've already modeled. Now we're going to add to these load cases some member loads as well. So we'll show you how to add those member loads in now. Okay, let's view our whole structure again. And the member loads we're going to add will be on the roof of our structure. And now we'll just view the selected objects only. And we're going to add in our member loads. To add a member load, we're first going to select all the top cord. So we're going to select by description, top cord 1. And then we're going to go to our member um, ribbon and we're going to add in our distributed load on the member. So we're going to make sure we choose the correct load case and we're going to do it under the mass of the structure again. And the global direction will be the x direction for this load case. The magnitude of the load will be 10 kilonewtons per meter. We'll do the same thing for the dead load case as well as the mass in the Z direction. And now we have both our member loads for our dead load and our area loads assigned in our dead load case. Next let's finish creating our live load and wind loads and then we'll be ready for our combinations. For our live load case, our load distribution will be slightly different. In these areas, we'll have a heavier live load. So we're going to put the value in there. And then we'll assign it to all of those areas at one time. Now let's assign the second live load intensity. OK, let's add a nodal wind load to the node selected. So I'm going to go here to nodes and nodal load and let's put the direction. This is for the wind in the x direction. Intensity is 12 kilonewtons. And we can assign that and then we can assign our other wind loads to the other nodes as well. The next step of the process is going to be to add the member loads for uplift on our roof structure. So let's add in our member loads that's going to represent the uplift for the wind forces on our roof structure. To add in our uplift, we're going to go to members, we're going to go to distributed loads, and then we're going to put a value in the local Y uplift, and the value will be 6 kilonewtons per meter. Let's view our whole structure again, and we can repeat this process for our wind loads in the Z direction. Now let's review the loading that we've created. We have our dead load, and for our dead load we have member load, so I'll go to the spreadsheet for the member load so that we can see that. And we also have area loads. If we want to see those values, we can see those values as well. That's our dead load. Let's take a look at our live load. So we have our live load values there. Those are our area loads. And then we can also, on the spreadsheet, we can view our member loads. Um, and let's go back to our wind. We have our wind in the X. We have our wind in the Z. And we have our seismic in the x direction, and we have our seismic in the z direction. 
and to create our seismic in the x and z direction we used our mass of our structure in the positive x direction and the mass of our structure in the positive z direction. Now that we've created our primary load cases let's go ahead and create our combinations, our load combinations. So we're going to go here to load combinations under the modeling ribbon. Okay the first combination we're going to add will be our dead load plus live load. So we'll add in the description with the factors and we're going to now put our factors on the dead and live load cases. So we'll put that on the load case filter and then we'll put our factors directly into the table here and create our combination. Click OK. OK let's go to our spreadsheet and look at our combination we just created. We created our dead load plus our live load and if we go to view here we can see combination one is our dead plus our live load. Let's continue to add in our other combinations. We can also use the spreadsheet to add in additional combinations that we would like to create. So we can do that by entering the text into the spreadsheet. I just created two additional load cases and I'm going to modify the text. And then we'll update the factors to match the load, correct load cases. So the factor for dead load is going to be 0 0.9 for both. And the factor for earthquake or seismic will be a factor of 1 for the x direction and 1 for the z direction. So that's how we would use this table to create combinations. So now that we've created our load combinations, we can review those load combinations on the list here. And when we're done reviewing our model, we can then go from the physical modeler back to the analytical modeler where we're going to input our analysis commands and our design commands to finish up our analysis and design of the structure. If we go back to model here, we'll see we have the option to return to the analytical modeling or we can use this button here as well. So let's hit this button here to return to analytical modeling. And now we'll go to analysis and we'll add in our analysis command. So here you can see I've already added in an analysis command to perform analysis uh, and do a linear elastic analysis here. And so for our design, we're going to be performing an AISC 360 uh, code check to the 2016 code. And we have some parameters that we've assigned. Now we're ready to run our steel member design. Let's run that analysis and do the design. And then after that, we can perform our connection design. And once we've performed our connection design, we can wrap it all up in our steel auto drafter and create our 2D drawings. To proceed with the connection design in the workflow menu, let's select the connection design option. The procedure to design a connection is simple. First you need to select a model joint where the connection will be assigned. Let's begin with the connection joint in the left part of the structure. As you can see, the connection joint is formed by two beams, one connecting to the column web, the other connecting to the column flange. Let's start designing the connection for these two model joints. The tools to assign connections are located on the connection assignment group on the connection design tab. These tools are the basic connection, smart connection, and gusset connection. Let's first assign a basic connection. A basic connection is a template that can automatically adjust to fit its geometry to the connection design members, but it does not optimize its elements like plates and bolts. In other words, a basic connection is a given set of well-defined connecting elements that are checked against the demands of the selected joint. 
First, you need to select the required design code. Currently, RAM Connection has the AISC, BS, EN, IS, and GB codes. Let's select the latest AISC code. Under the design code, there are several other options depending on the specification selected. In the middle, you will find a list of connection types available for AISC. Let's use a single plate connection for the beam to column web joint. In the bottom part of the dialog, you can see the different basic templates for the connection selected. The name of the template indicates the most important information. For example, the second from the list indicates it is a template for a single plate connection. For a beam to column web joint, it has a single half inch plate with two bolts of one inch diameter. In this way, it's easy to identify and select the needed template. Let's try selecting a few templates. We'll try a 3 8 inch plate with two bolts, three quarter inch diameter, followed by a one quarter inch plate, two bolts, three quarter inch diameter, and finally a half inch plate with two bolts, one inch diameter. RAM Connection will try each of these templates and select the one that fits best to the geometry and the strength of the selected joints. RAM Connection validates that one beam to column web joint has been created and one connection has been assigned to that joint. We can see from the spreadsheet on the right that a connection has been created with a capacity to demand ratio of 0 0.15. Now let's try a smart single plate connection for the BCF joint. A smart connection is a template that can automatically optimize the quantity and dimensions of connection elements like plates and bolts. Since the optimization is performed internally during the design, only one template for each connection type is required. Again, we can see that one BCF joint has been created and one connection has been assigned. The same steps apply for moment connections as well. Model joints can handle more than one connection, so in the case of moment frames, moment connections will also be required to be assigned to the joints with shear connections. To proceed, let's just consider the same joint and assign, for example, a flange plate moment connection to the BCF joint. In this way, shear and moment loads are transmitted by the shear and moment connections, respectively. In this case, since a moment connection will be assigned, we need to define the seismic design parameters. In this case, I will enable the seismic design. Next, we will select the load combination to be considered in the design. Then I will pick a BCF flange plate. Let's try a template with a 3 quarter inch plate with 3 bolts, 3 quarter inch diameter. And let's try a 1 inch plate with 3 bolts and 3 quarter inch diameter in order to see which connection will best fit the model joint. Since that model joint already has one shear connection, RAM connection prompts me to see if I would like to replace the existing connection joint. In this case, since we're required to have both shear and moment connection at that joint, I'll select no. Now we can see that we have a shear plate connection and also a flange plate moment connection for the BCF joint. Let's take a look at the connection design. In order to edit the connection, we'll double click on the spreadsheet. This is the connection pad or the connection dialog. It is required to update or create connections. It can be accessed when a user clicks on a model connection. The connection pad has the main toolbar at the top and also the addition area to the left which is used to show and modify the connection data. The graphical area is the panel in the center where you can see the 3D view or the DXF view of the connection. And finally, the traffic lights and the status that show the strength ratio 
and the general status of the connection. Let's take a look at the reports. Reports are organized in three parts. First, the demands, which are the loads used during the connection design that come from the member forces from the model analysis. Second, the geometric considerations. There are several geometric limits imposed by the code for common practices for a variety of connecting elements. And finally, the design checks that contain all the limit states verified for the connection parts and joint members. Reports can also present detailed equations for each geometric and design check, making it easy to identify connection problems and fix them. In order to show the detailed equations, click the alpha button at the top of the reports dialog box. Once the equations have been populated in the report, it is easy to identify the equations used in the calculation and the reference back to the design code. Not only is a 3D view available, but also a 2D DXF view is available for all connections. The DXF views can be saved and opened in any CAD software like MicroStation. In order to see the DXF view, we click on the DXF tab on the right. Then we can review all the parts of the connection. To export the 2D DXF files, we can click the button at the toolbar at the top. In a similar way, it is possible to assign connections to all model joints without the need to select them one by one. STAB Pro has tools to select the joints and perform all the connection designs at once. Let's try, for example, selecting all the beam to girder joints and assigning a basic template. Not only are shear and moment connections available, but also vertical and horizontal bracing connections, as well as base plates and truss connections. Let's try designing a vertical bracing connection. Let's go ahead and select the model joint where the vertical bracing connection will be assigned. We'll select gusset connection. We'll enable the seismic provisions. We'll select the load case that we need. And then we'll select the vertical bracing connection type we need. As you can see, we have several connection types available. In this case, let's select the column beam brace. Let's try the directly welded template, which is the most commonly used. Now the connection has been created, and we can see it has a yellow status. Let's check the connection in order to see if we can fix that. The yellow status is probably because the double angles are out of the column flange. So let's change that. Let's change the connection type from angles to single plates. So we're going to do this for the right beam and also the left beam. And now I have my connection with a green status. Of course I can check the reports or the DXF view. When a connection has multiple interfaces, several DXF drawings will be automatically generated. For example, the main view shows all the interfaces with a reference to each DXF part. For example, DXF part 1 is the gusset and bracing connection, which is directly bolted. Finally, we'll perform a base plate design. Let's select all the column base joints. Let's start by assigning a pinned base plate. For that, we'll go to the Smart Connection tool. Let's consider the seismic provisions. Let's select the base plate. In this case, this option is available. So let's say that our site class is site class D. And let's choose the pinned base plate option. Two pinned base plates have now been assigned to our columns in the middle. Now let's choose a joint with a gusset and base plate connection. Let's choose gusset connection, enable our seismic provisions, 
and then choose the gusset base plate template. When we review our connection pad, we'll see that the base plate does not only resist the column forces, but also the forces from the bracing as well. If we review our results report, we can see our design checks and geometric considerations for the gusset and brace connection. And we can also see the design checks for our base plate connection. We can see that the base plate checks are in accordance with Design Guide 1. Connection designers often need to create customized templates to fit basic connections that are widely used on different projects. And avoid the need to edit your model connections to match the design of the desired commonly used connections. In order to create a basic template, you need to go to the connection database. First, we'll need to create a new group. That will be the new group that will contain all of your custom basic templates. Then we'll add a table and we'll select from frame connections or truss connections. We'll select the design code for the connection. We'll select the connection type. In this case, let's uh, choose a shear connection. Let's select the joint type. Uh, let's choose a beam and column flange connection. For the connector name, we're going to try a single plate. Now that we have our new table, we can start adding new items. Let's give our new custom template a name. We'll call the template My Single Plate BCF 3 quarter inch plate with two bolts, one half inch diameter template. Now we just need to define the connector data. Let's assign the thickness for the single plate at three quarters of an inch. And let's choose a material for our steel, A36 steel. The bolts I'll use will be half an inch A325 steel. Let's select our template to have two bolts. And with that, we have defined the requirements of our custom connection template. Let's go ahead and save our template. Then we can close the connection pad. Now we can add our new template to the correct basic template list. So let's assign our new template to AISC. And we can see at the bottom of the list, now it's available to be assigned in our connection design. So now if we want to assign our new template, we'll go ahead and select the model joint. Now let's go to basic connections. In this case, it's a single plate BCF connection. And we can see at the end of the list, we have our new template that we just created. Let's choose that connection and press OK. From the spreadsheet, we can see that our connection has been assigned to the model joint and it's failing with a ratio of 1.41. So that's the way we can create custom templates for our own connection designs to be used on different projects. Now that we've gone through the connection design workflow, let's take a look at our steel auto drafter workflow. Steel Auto Drafter is a feature in STAB Pro that helps in generating drawings that can then be used as a preliminary or basic drawing for creating the fabrication and detailed drawings. Steel Auto Drafter will automatically produce 2D layouts, elevations, and projective views for a variety of structures. For example, portal frames, trusses, electric towers, and more. It also will automatically generate the steel material takeoff, or MTO. The MTO can be created in a text file or drawing file format. 
So once we're done with the analysis in the model, we can go to our workflow tab and enter into Steel Auto Drafter. Once we're in Steel Auto Drafter, we have the ability to rotate our structure and look at it from the top view. We can view from the left hand side. We can view the structure from the front. So we can easily review the 3D model and decide where we want to create 2D drawings in Steel Auto Drafter. Let's talk about how to create grids. From the top view of the structure, we can see that we have a grid going alphabetically across in the X direction and numerically down in the Z direction. Let's open up the grid dialog box and we'll see by default a grid is automatically created at the center line of each column. So at each column center, a grid is automatically created. If we desire to create a grid point in between column lines, the grid manager will automatically list the positions of all the members present along the X and Z axes. So we can just select the coordinate position where we want to set the grid. In the physical modeler, we saw that the top cord was one single member. However, in the analytical modeler, it's broken into three individual members. If we automatically generate our drawings from the analytical model as it is, Steel Auto Drafter will draw the members as three separate segments. In Steel Auto Drafter, we can group the segments so that they will be drawn as one single member. To group members of the portal frame, we'll select a member on the frame and choose the section at x equal to zero. Once we're in the section view, at a particular section coordinate, we can see the different options available for grouping members in the frame. Now let's group the segments of the top cord. We will select all the segments of the member, right click to create our group, and then we'll see that we're asked whether we want to have purlins on the section. So now we can specify the section of the purlin. So we can choose the type of angle or channel that we want, and we can choose from the section list. Now let's create groups for our other top cord and bottom cord in the frame. Now that we've grouped the members in the frame, we can generate the drawings at that section. Select the member, right click, and choose Draw Section. The drawing settings has different scale options that are available. We also have the option to draw full sections or part sections. So let's select full section. Now we have the option to generate the drawing or add it to the drawing list. If we create a drawing list and close the application and reopen it, the drawing list will always be available at any point in time. So let's go ahead and generate our drawing. So we're going to get the elevation drawing, the schedule of steel sections, the material takeoff, and also a legend for the drawing. In the same way, we can create a drawing list with sections at the desired coordinate positions. We can see the drawing list that has been created and we can select only the drawings that are to be generated. Let's select the option to draw. Now the drawings were generated for all the members in the projected plane. Now let's choose the plan drawing option and view the structure from the top. From the top view, we can see that the horizontal bracing is below the roof level. So to generate a plan at the horizontal bracing level, we'll select the member, right click on it, and we'll choose the plan at 7,000 millimeters. Choose to create the drawing. Let's take a look at the horizontal bracing on this plan level, and we can see that from the text, and we can see that one of the bracing members is grouped together, the other is broken into two members. Now let's take a look at our section at z equal to zero. If we look at our vertical bracing, we can see when we have bracing that is ungrouped, it will be broken into two segments on the drawing. 
and the group bracing will be drawn as a continuous member. Let's take a look at a few drawings we generated for this model. We can see we have our elevation on grid A. Let's also take a look at the elevation drawing on grid 1, the plan drawing for the upper level, and finally the elevation drawing on grid 2. Now that we've completed our structural analysis and design in the physical modeler, our connection design, and our 2D drawing creation, we are finished with our integrated solutions for Steel Structures presentation. Thank you all for your attendance and have a great day.